Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here, and we are going to talk about the Bunker E15 in the Lost Sector at 12.50. I'll come back and do the series at 12.80 later on. And this one is located up here in the Eventide Ruins, in case you guys haven't been up here. Uh, but what we've got is Vex Champions, you're going to be dealing with Barrier and Overload. There is literally one Barrier guy, the rest are going to be Overload that you've got to deal with. Uh, you've also got Extra Shields, Match Game, Locked Equipment, so you do need to set up your build before you go in. For your gear, now this is what I would call an unoptimal loadout, at least for me, um, but there are other options. Now, if you don't have Masterwork gear, there are just a couple things that you are going to want to work on. Um, reserves and ammo finders for whatever heavy ammo you use. If I'm using a grenade launcher right now, I will probably switch my machine gun ammo finder to grenade launcher ammo finder just to make sure I'm trying to get a decent amount of that ammo. Same thing with scavenger. If you do get a brick, scavengers are always really good to make sure. And grenade launcher right now comes from the season pass, or if you get it, it's still going to be about three. Either way, make sure your scavengers and your ammo finders are going to be at least as helpful as possible for whatever you're using, because that's going to be pretty beneficial when you take on the champions. Now, you've got a couple different ways to go about the champions. You can either go anti-barrier and overload for all guns, or you can use some of these types of things over here. And these are actually beneficial for the overload because this one specifically for thermal overload. Solar and stasis grenades cause disruption, which is good for overload champions, which is mostly what you're gonna face. Uh, delaying the ability of regeneration. Now these were kind of weird the way they worked, like the health, you kind of gotta manage it, so killing them quick is still beneficial. But if you pair this class item mod with this class item mod, Recharge your grenade ability whenever you're, you or a member of your fire team disrupts a champion. So if you disrupt a champion, you get your grenade back. So you throw your grenade out and then disrupt it, you have the grenade right back. It's kind of amazing. Now, the other alternative to deal with overload is going to be either scout rifles, which still not a fan of scout rifles in PvE, or auto rifles. And auto rifles are at least, you know, kind of reliable on these guys. They're all... Um, Overloads are going to be Minotaurs. They're pretty manageable. Just keep firing. The teleports are a little annoying, but they usually get to be managed fairly well. I'm sure at a 1280, I'd get my butt kicked a little bit, and I've died a few times, but auto rifles work. Now, for your build itself, my preference would be my Gnawing Hunger, because I have a really good one from last season, and also I was running Xenophage, but I know not everybody has that. So I just got done running this thing with the Arctic Haze. It's the new auto rifle from Varix. You get him unlocked. It's just a solar auto rifle. And then a crowd pleaser, a grenade launcher that I'm sure you've seen one or two of. And this is going to be a void grenade launcher. Now, the grenade launcher is good for taking out the ads. I was trying a machine gun like this would be an option as well. But as this is solar, then you're going to need something void in this department. So it's really up to you and where you want the void option. Uh, if you've got a gnawing hunger, it doesn't have to be a perfect roll. But if you've got a gnawing hunger, it's still a reasonable auto rifle for you know, knocking stuff out like this. Mine Subsistence Rampage, it's kind of a great role, so I can't argue. Even something like this is Truth Teller. If you know you can depend on your grenades for that um, overload disruption, you could use something like Truth Teller. I got a really good roll here too, but anything for that quick void damage to break a shield, and then you should be able to take them down with whatever you got. Biggest thing, you need to make sure you have voids, void shields covered, because the Minotaurs will be a pain in the butt. They're really the only shields in here, are mainly just void shields or Minotaurs. So you need void in one way or another. It's really up to you. But I'm gonna go unoptimal build here, and this is where you can take care of those. So if you do choose to go anti-barrier on pulse, which you are gonna need one anti-barrier, so I threw it on the new Hailing Confusion Pulse Rifle, got a roll that I'm happy with. I don't know if it's perfect, but I like the synergy of it. So you got anti-barrier on pulse, and then overload rounds on your auto rifle. But again, I also have the overload option covered between my grenades. So I've got two backups depending on what's going on. As the overload guys do charge you, and especially when you get up to something like a 1280, may not be a bad thing to have backup options. That's why this will be kind of a nice thing to unlock. So let's jump into the Lost Sector. I'll show you guys how this works. All right, so when you load in, use this little tunnel you've got right here to work on as many of the ads as you can from far away. Pulse Rifle's a nice one to take these guys out from range. That one will typically hide as soon as you make him angry and that captain is going to stay back just a little bit. But what I try and do is try and get some angles on these drags first and the vandals, so I just work on the captain last. Now, the revives in the bottom corner, you start with three, so be aware of how many revives you got because you will have to start over at a point. I'm just trying to take out the drags to start. But again, I've also got my auto rifle. If I really want to go with that, I'm going to be able to. 
And I can stagger him, lets me work on the drag. And then now, once he's staggered, good to go. So you can kill him pretty quick with a grenade launcher. And this is why ammo finders and scavengers are important to make sure you continue to reload your champion killing weapon. I don't love the way this, uh, this auto rifle feels. Maybe it's just me, maybe it's a 720, but so far, I haven't fallen in love with this auto rifle yet. We'll have to see. Gnawing hunger is still my baby for the time being. You know, four ads down there, but the nice thing about this lost sector, you've always got a few little drones, or I'm sorry, not drones, but basically the frames that are good that are going to help you out. So your benefit is always to unlock as many of those as possible. As soon as you clear out a room, they'll run on ahead. Same thing down here. Here's where we're going to have Void. So if you want, you can go straight after the Void guy. Blow him up. He's going to come charging at you around the corner probably pretty quick. A couple shots and I'm sure he'll be down. Watch the shield. Once you break it, try and make sure you take care of the guy. Those guys will open up. You'll come with you. You're going into the big room. Now what we're looking to do is shoot this one over here and this one over here and let all the frames get out. So the first box you can shoot from across the way, really from cover. And this little portion back here is good for cover if you get overwhelmed. Typically what I'll do is just try and strafe back and forth a couple times. I want to shoot that box to get the frames out. Kind of let them get out there. Let a couple grenades get thrown at me. And then you can work on the lower level down here. Work on all of these guys. And just watch what your head can see and just be careful if you feel like you're getting overwhelmed. Watch the snipers. Just make sure you stay out of line of sight of the snipers. That's an important piece. As these guys run up here. There's going to be quite a few up there. But, you know, got a grenade launcher. A couple guys got it quickly. Makes things go a little faster. And again, ammo dropping. Ammo for heavies. You can't bet on it. It's always random. Just interestingness. But once you're in here, you're going to have a Cyclops. You're it is going to behoove you to take this thing out really fast so you don't get nuked by it. Try and nail that guy if you can. You take him off. I really just don't want to get hit by him because that can typically be about a, almost a one-shot like that. It's 12.50 now. Later on, if it was 12.80, I'm sure it actually would be a one-shot. This is your only barrier champion. It's right in this room. I'll kind of get to him last. I'll usually swing around here. This will give me an angle over here at this Hobgoblin, but also this box. A couple more frames are in there that are going to be able to help me out. Bit of having bit barrier on your pulse, you can work on dropping um, any of the Hobgoblins. Even if they put up their shield, you can shoot through it, so continue to whittle them down. Now you got frames out here putting in a lot of work. We can throw one grenade down there, but we got to find our barrier guy. Now, once the barrier guy actually goes big, you can do this one of two ways. You can just keep firing working them down, make sure you always got your uh, barrier breaker ready. And you can do this without burning any heavy ammo. If you feel like you're low on heavy, kind of at a risk, take them out slowly, just continue to manage them. You've actually got the little ads helping you right now. They don't do a ton of damage, but you know, if I don't do anything, they actually will eventually kill them bit by bit. So once everything's clear in here, we've just got the final room to go. Check for any ammo you've got. Actually, they did get a little heavy to drop. Again, scavengers, ammo finders, all good things, trust me. They're worth they're worth putting the mod on. So all these guys are going to run in once things actually get started. Sit back here in the start, and you can take out most of the ads. You're going to have a wyvern that roams around. That's the big harpy with legs, in case you're wondering what I'm talking about. You're also going to have a couple hobgoblin snipers. Those are important to take out pretty early. And then the wyvern you want to watch. This little tunnel right here that I backed into, I use it a lot. And it's a really, it's honestly something you should just get comfortable coming back in here and using this spot. as much as you need to. If you need to push back in here, push back in here. It is okay. Now, I used my grenade there, not kind of how I wanted to, but I did, so. All right. Big thing about the goblins, remember they leave the electricity on the floor. Now, I did use my grenade for overload, so I have to depend on my auto rifle right now. If I want to make sure and use my grenade for the Overload Champions, I need to make sure and chill before that Overload Champion comes back here. But again, remember, if you're in a pinch, you're low on lives, anything like that, you can run pretty much as far back as you need to, and you're probably going to be okay. I did get some heavy to drop, which means I can dump it into the Champion when he gets here. And the biggest thing, I'm just going to get a lot of heavy ammo right now, so trust me, this is not normal. 
At some point, there's probably a heavy, heavy champion running around out there, and it's an overload champion. So as I said, you had the one barrier champion. Overload will be around. He's Roman. And the boss is up in the middle. Now, if you have anti-barrier, you can actually literally pick him off with your primary, which is kind of nice. If you got enough heavy ammo and you can get a good break in the shields, well, it's nice to get a nice reload. I'm going to go for a good dunk on the grenades. Try and get a lot of those to connect. You do a decent amount of damage. For one, you'll probably warp him over. That's one of his spots that he goes to. And also, at some point, we'll probably be calling in the champion if he chooses to make himself seen. He's roaming around somewhere in that room, but I don't want to roam out there and try and pull him. So right now, I'm just going to try and work on the Hydra. All right, so he teleported away. There he is. And this is why. That champion, that grenade right there will save your butt. And it will actually keep stunning him while he's in it. And I've already got the grenade back to use if there's anything else coming. So at the start of the fight, you're going to get one of those champions. And then when you get him down to the final third of health, you're going to get the other. Now, if the Hydra just lights up your area, back up, pull back, you'll be safe. And again, just keep picking off the guys so you have less to worry about. Get some ammo drops if you need it. Try and put some damage on the boss. Again, that comes really fast. Normally, he isn't quite that quick on the turn, and I can put some damage into him. Apparently, hitting the crit spot in the nose is really pissing him off. Once you get him down to that final third of health, once you get that little notch down, there will be one more spawn of adds that happens. Now, if you get a point where he's not looking at you, the adds are being helpful. Come out here, grab a little ammo. Looks like I got low enough for the final set of adds to spawn, so my timing was pretty close. He's going to be kind of roaming down the room on the lower level. You can see him over there on the left. Over there's the actual boss. We're also going to have an overload captain coming again. Or overload minotaur coming. Champion will be moving. He's going to come from one side to the other. Typically works his way around. I've also seen him get stuck up there. And if you're looking for the champion for platinum rewards on the Lost Sector, it's worth just noting where he could be. And again, just trying to find him. Trying to send him around. Do enough to aggravate him, get the champion. Champion has appeared, you can see that in the bottom. So maybe the ads came later, the champion should be coming. I gotta be ready. There he comes. Now I wanna show you guys the auto rifle burn instead. Now he will pull all the way back in here typically. Now that's same thing. Now this is where the auto rifle's crucial. Now, this is more of a save my butt moment. That's how you'll should. If you ever get into a moment, then you can really go stasis if you need to. I can just steep, keep staggering him until I'm ready. Go for the burn. Finish him off. Not how I would tell you guys to ever recommend that, but, you know, if you get in a pinch, pop your super, pull back. See if you can get your grenade charged. Do what you gotta do. That's not optimal, but that's good. Should finish it up right there. And there you go. That's the Lost Sector in less than 10 minutes. And that's the 1250s. The 1280s are going to be a bit more technical and things I would advise probably leveling up a bit for. Right now, I'm running at 1261. So nothing crazy overpowered. You know, I hit the power cap. I think I'm... And there you go. Enhancement core. I got 10 here always pieces, which I feel like you get a couple bonus of those drops a day. But that is Bunker E15 on 1250. Unoptimal loadout, there is better. Xenophage works great because it's so easy to control. You got like 30 shots. If you have Xenophage, I highly recommend it. A gnawing hunger, and then any kinetic pulse that you have a choice on, use that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a like below if you did. If you did enjoy the content, you can find me on Twitch and Twitter. And also here on YouTube, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And hit that alert bell next to that subscribe button. You guys will see my guides coming to you guys and everything else that I'm going to be playing and covering here on the channel. Lots of Destiny as always, but plenty of other stuff to come as well. Thank you all very much. I'll see you in the next one.